The city of Pittsburgh was hit with a series of killings they referred to as the Richard Rowe Murders. These copycat killings were inspired by a vigilante known as No One. In an effort to hold the powerful accountable, No One did data drops on several high-ranking individuals in the city. After the data drops, four individuals were attacked by copycat killers. Three of them were murdered, one survived. There are those who blame no one for inspiring these copycat killers, but is he associated with them or are they acting on their own? Police have who they believe to be the person responsible for those Richard Rowe murders in custody, and he's the son of a prominent detective on the police force. And now Julia Page, a star reporter for the Pittsburgh Ledger, has been asked by her newspaper to head up a podcast to keep the public updated on the happenings in this case. Julia was the first to publicize the data dump in the pages of the Ledger many months ago. Now this thing is taking on a life of its own. Even though she's thankful for the notoriety, she doesn't like the circus atmosphere that this, is whole, this whole thing is becoming. Meanwhile, the copycat killings continue. And we're unsure if it's no one who's to blame or was yet another copycat killer. This whole thing is so beautifully complex and layered. All we know for sure is that there is a vigilante known as no one and there are copycat killers out there. Are they associated? We're not sure. Although it takes place in the Radiant Black universe, it's totally its own story. The writers have thought of everything. In the back matter, they have a Wikipedia page for the alleged killer. They have a timeline for the Richard Rowe murders. They even have a person-by-person -person breakdown of all the main characters. There's even a QR code in the book that links you to episode one of the podcast, Who Is No One with Julia Page. Oh, man, I tell you, this is something so different and so new in comics. It's a multimedia, multi-platform story that I think is going to be special. I have to give the writers Kyle Higgins and Brian Bucoletto the credit for coming up with this idea uh, just to have the courage to try something like this in the world of comics is just brilliant. I really try to be on top of all the indie comics that are coming out, but it's almost impossible. Somehow I missed this one, but I was able to find copies on my comic shop uh, because they were just not in the stores where, where I'm at. And if you can find these, the number one of this book, please pick it up. You deserved to treat yourself to this story. And it is definitely worth a look, at least to issue one, to see what you think of this story. This is something that uh, has not been done before in the world of comics. Who is no one? Number one. Uh, this is an excellent book. I highly recommend it. Image, the House of Ideas, does it again. So that's all for this Indie Comics review. Uh, be sure to leave a like. Be sure to hit the like button. Uh, turn on notifications so you know when I'm making my next video. And until next time, see you guys in the funny papers. I not only love reading Indie Comics, but I've self-published several Indie Comics of my own. You can find them on my Alternative City shop, which has a link below this video. There, you'll find, along with my comics, t-shirts, stickers, and mystery boxes, you find pens and magnets that I call CBOs or comic book originals, which are buttons, magnets, and pocket mirrors that I make from superhero comic books. These are one-of-a-kind items made from images cut directly from comic books, not photocopies, so each one is unique. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and leave a thumbs up.